Hi friends, Christine here, and this video is a kit tips tutorial for a new kit I have up on Etsy. It's this adorable little mini um, photo album, and it's definitely got a Victorian vibe in it. This one is a rose theme. There are roses everywhere, um, embellishing all the little frames. So this kit comes with two different covers, um, one with a mortise that you can cut out and add a photo, and one without. And there's another version I have handy, which is the Pansies version, um, which is all same idea, same kit, but Pansies. And it's really beautiful and, and adorable and quaint and lovely. And you can see that this cover is a little bit more elaborate than this. This is how it comes off the kit. Um, of course, you add the ribbon and grommets, but you don't even need to do that. You can just glue, this, glue the spine the way it is. I went ahead and made this because I had this idea when I looked at it. I said, oh, wouldn't it be fun if it looked like a Victorian album, you know, velvety and whatnot. So I went ahead and got into that zone of creation, never even thought about turning on the camera. So I don't have a video of how I made this, but if there is enough interest, I probably could put together a video on um, creating this. You'd have to let me know. Let me know in the comments. But this is what we're doing today. It's super easy and very versatile. Obviously, it can be a little standalone mini album that you give as a gift or that you keep, you know, uh, several different ones for small events that you want to commemorate. Um, it can go into your journal. It can slip right in. So this is what we're working on today. Let's get to work. So there are a bunch of different kits and they all come with different variations and some come with alternate covers. Um, this is one of them, the wedding day kit. Comes with one with a mortise so you can include a photo and one without, so in case you want it plain. And I'll do this one today obviously so I can show you how to address some of the openings. And you can do a couple of things. And one of them is, of course, you can simply die cut this, this circle out and that would be an easy way to do it. Now, I would recommend normally before cutting, trimming the page to size, and don't do that yet because I want to tell you the trick to it. Um, I would normally say cut your circles, cut your squares, you know, cut all the mortises out while you still have enough paper that you can hold on to. Um, but in this case, this paper probably won't fit through your die cut machine, or at least it wouldn't fit through mine, so you'd have to trim it first. Wait for me. We'll catch up to how to trim it um, if you're going to use a die cut. I'm going to use my handy little circle cutter. And I'm going to pull this over here so I can actually see it without getting my fat head in the way. I think that's good. It's going to be good enough. So I know this is a one and three quarter inch circle. So I'm going to find my little one and three quarter inch spot, which is right there. And I'm going to have a go at it. And there it is. Okay. Lovely. So I left this ring um, because some of your circle cutters might be slightly smaller. I actually wouldn't mind if it had stayed. Um, so I might make an adjustment to it. So that's the first thing to cut any circles out of your pages or, or squares or whatever you have. The next thing is to score. So we're doing... Christine's way of scoring in the video, but you could score any way you like. If you want to use a scoreboard, that's fine. If you want to use a um, burnishing tool like this instead of a knife, that's fine. Everyone gets to do whatever they want. I'm just giving you my recommendations. I don't really recommend necessarily using the back of the knife. Um, it's just a way to do it, and it's easy and fast since you already have the knife and we'll be cutting things out. So, now you can go ahead and do that to all the pages. You can do all the scoring, all the mortise cuts, and then you can cut these on a, on a uh, paper cutter. But before you do that, you need to know this. You are only trimming these two sides off. You're leaving these two ends intact, and we're gonna trim those at the end. Um, or at least after we've trimmed off everything else, and I'll show you why. And it all has to do with being able to, um, yeah, accommodate the size of this paper, the letter size paper, and still be able to use the whole sheet and get a larger, larger page. Um, if I had to accommodate these borders, then we'd have to have a smaller page. So we're gonna use the borders since they don't show. Here I am just talking, 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 keep cutting. Okay. 
All right. So since we scored it, we know where our middle is. I'm going to fold that there. Now, what you want to do is fold, we're going to trim this now, and we're still going to leave a little of the white border on, and we're going to make this fit five and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'm looking here on mine, quarter inches right there, five and a quarter, trying to keep it straight. Oop. And now I'm going to trim. Okay, so that will leave three and a quarter inches to the fold, and the whole piece is five and a quarter inches. So you can see I'm going to have to ink that if I don't trim it. But, so there's one. That's how we do one. How to do a couple of these others. Let's see. All right, so this one, same thing. I would do the mortise first and the scoring. So you might just go through and score everything and then go through and cut the mortises. Again, it's your call. Do whatever you want. Okay. So I'm going to score because this is my, my routine is to score first. All right. So the other thing about these arcs is they are based on a four inch circle. So this is a four inch can. It was regularly or it came originally as a diced uh, tomato can, 28 ounces. And now we just stick it on here and follow it to get a nice arc. And the same is true of both of those. So now you can see we have a beautiful arc here. And we can go ahead and cut out the rest of the shape. Didn't quite go to the edge here. Okay, so now a nice professional looking cut, and we're going to do that to all the pages. And you can choose how many you page it, how many you pages, how many pages you want to use. Um, I have various size um, bindings that will fit a number of different pages. So we'll talk about that once we get to the the binding part. Um, but I would say I think five pages are good. Or let me see, I'll show you. I might have already shown you this, but this is a fancy one I did um, with the original album, um, the Pansies. And I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total pages, including what would be the covers. So then, of course, this is a different cover. I made this as a fancy schmancy cover. Um, so seven pages total, including the covers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so there are seven pages. God, brilliant. So you can use all the pages. Now the thing to remember is you can duplicate pages and you can leave out pages and you can order them in any way you like. So maybe you don't want square pictures in your, in your um, album. So then you would just print multiple of, of a different shape. And I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting these out and getting them ready. And then I'll show you how to get the pictures in and get them together. All right. So this one I did not, I did not score. So I'm going to stick this on here and cheat, um, particularly for that middle score. But we'll, we'll take them all. That looks close. So the issue is simply that it needs to be um, it needs to be kind of close. You want your, your pages to align. So I'm going to does that look close? I should use the whoop de doo Straight edge. The only thing is I hate rubbing a, the blade against it because it kind of chews it up. But since we're going at the back of the blade, it should be okay. But you can see I already have hit the ruler a few times. So let, let's just get this up straight. Oh, that's not where it scores, it scores here. That's the edge. 
Oh, I broke my blade again. I just a brand new blade. Brand new. Just put it in today. And I already broke it. And then here, line it up like so. And then come, oops, come back. <laughs> Okay, so now we should be able to, even with a broken blade score, that should be okay. Okay, so I'm going to put my pages in order, or the order I want them. I'm going to ink them now, and then I'm going to, that's the back. Oh, then I'm going to actually hit them with the bone folder because you want them to lay pretty, pretty flat when you put the pictures in. All right, oh, and the cover, and we're going with this cover picture. All right, so now it's a matter of putting them in an order you like. And that's a journal space. That's a journal space. That's the back cover. This is a nice fancy page. This is circle and square. Goes like that. That's a journal page. Okay, so let's see. Kind of want I always want kind of a wow in the beginning so I like I like these two and then another and we don't want two squares together we could throw a journaling page in here and then we have that and then another journal page in the end okay so now I'm going to ink and I'm going to trim and the the way I'm going to trim, the way I suggest you trim, is to line up your four edges. You know, what will be the, the front edge of the little album. And clamp them together. Like so. And then you can, um, I don't know if your paper cutter will go through all of that. Or if, um, or if you need to do them one at a time. I'm going, I have a paper cutter that will do all of them, so I'm going to do that and trim this so that this width is five and a quarter inches from here to here. And if it's a little off, you know, it's okay. You can adjust in the end. And since we're doing the cover as well, actually we're not here because I already did the cover, um, then it'll all wind up being the same, the same dimensions anyway. So let me go do this. You trim any way you like. If you do them one at a time, two at a time, and uh, paper cutter, knife, scissors, just get them down to four and a quarter, oh, sorry, five and a quarter. All right, so with all of my pages trimmed, inked, now five and a quarter inches wide, I can start putting in photos. So everybody's photos is gonna be different, particularly with this kit. Um, the other kits are more historical, more Victorian. Um, this one is particularly um, useful for putting in your own photos. So for example, we could put this charming couple here. Um, if you're going to give this as a gift, perhaps to the bride and groom after the wedding, you know, you've shot a lot of pictures, maybe even on your phone, and then you print them and you create this cute little album. So I'm not doing that because I don't know those people and I don't have a wedding to do. So I'm going to use these people and keep it very Victorian and charming. So how I like to do it is I use a little painter's tape. You could use washi tape or regular tape, scotch tape. Um, I just happen to have this on my desk here. I'm going to stick it so I can align my photo as I would like, which is about there. Let's get more flowers there. All right, so now you have some options. Um, I recommend gluing the pages closed. Now, of course, I need to put in any other photos that would be on the other side, but in this one, it's just this page. So I would glue it closed. 
you don't have to glue it closed. There are a couple of ways I'll show you later that you can actually make it so that the album, the pages can be replaced and the photos removed. But to do that, it's a little bit tricky. But um, if you want to, if you want to go that route, you can just tape your photos in with tape and don't glue them. But then you're going to see it in there. And I don't like that, but you might if you want the ability to, to remove photos or replace photos. So that being the case, go for it. If it's not, which for me it's not, I am going to glue this shut. And you don't need a ton of glue, but you do want to get the edges. Oh, 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 stop. Oh, never mind. Yes, don't stop. Go, go. <laughs> um, we'll just do it anyway and I'll show you. What I should have done first, and it's not the end of the world, with all of these pages, is we should have folded the binding area. So we'll do that second on this one. So there's just a little glue, since hardly any glue's coming out of my little glue container today. I'm going to put that in. And what we should have done ahead of time is make this fold. You want to fold it in two directions just to get it um, flexible. Okay, so now we're going to go our next photos. So for me, I'm going to use these cuties here. Same thing, a little tape just keeps it in place while I glue. put them about there. Cheerful children. And then who did we put here? We put that couple. So we're going to put this couple here. And I'll look at it again. Let's put them like so. So that's how we're going to go along and fill up all of our photo slots. And you know, each person is going to do it different. You're going to choose different photos. There will be Victorian photos included with this kit. So if you just wanted to make a pretty album for your journal, um, you'd have the, the, the photos to do it. So once we do that, let me find another little photo that feels wedding -y. Oh, this one. Okay. I need my scissors. Okay, let me just trim this a little. And give it a piece of tape. So this might be the bride's sister, perhaps, who sat for a photo with the photographer. Okay, there we go. Okay, I don't want to do that. What was going to happen is that this tape was going to impinge on my hinge. So I'm going to stick it on the other side where it won't. And now I'm going to adjust. I'm going to actually overlap a little bit the other photo just because I didn't trim it really tight, which is fine. There we go. All right. Oh, charming. Okay. So now, same thing. We should have done our folds, but we're going to do them after the fact. And now we just, same thing, we're going to glue this shut. So you want to get up near the edges on all of the photos so that everything sticks together. But you don't have to go crazy, it just has to be closed. Okay, and then holding your pictures. I could have gotten a little bit more glue in that area, but it's fine. It makes it look more realistic. She's glued in. I mean, they're glued in. They're not going anywhere. Okay, so then same thing. We want to fold these the flaps. All right, so moving forward, you're going to go and pick your images and fill up your pages and glue them closed.
So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and I'll be back and we'll show you how this goes together. Now I've got all of my pages inserted with photos and in the order I want them. Oh look at her. And I'm ready to put everything together. So the easiest thing to do, and it's what we're going to do now, is to just glue them together. So starting at the back, that's the back, which of course you are welcome to decorate. Oh, 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 we never did all of the photos, the back and forth. And we want to do that. And it looks like, see, this is what happens when you don't score all of your images. I scored it on one side, but not the other. And the fold is just unattractive. But for our purposes today, we're living with it. You see how nice that is when you score your photos? Right? I guess I wasn't paying attention as I'm making the video. Sorry about that. And it feels like this one's not glued together because it had no photo in it, so it didn't get any glue love. Give me a second. This one folded and folded. This one the other way. In the front we did. Okay, so now that we have that all right, now we're going to glue them together. You know, this is probably one of the easiest kits I have, and it's taken me twice as long as any kit to film because I keep getting interrupted. So I'm not quite sure where I left off. I believe we were heading toward gluing this spine. And doing that is really simple. So what we want to do first is choose. So this is plus or minus seven folded pages, and that's what we have here. So I'm going to use this one. If you added more pages, which you can do, um, you'd use a wider spine. First things first, always score before you cut. And here. And now we just slice this off. Okay, so. We have now the, our fancy little spine with roses, and if you look at it, you will see that there are two tiny white dots. I don't know if you could see it. There's one here. Is this is in focus. Okay, so there's one here, and then there's one down here. And they're really small so that they don't get seen if you don't do a grommeted hole um, or a Chicago screw hole. And we'll talk about those in a second. But I wanted to point that out now because that will be important if you decide to take it to the next step. So now this is going to be the binding for this and it's slightly larger. So you'll want to trim it ultimately, but I, I left it slightly larger so that there'd be some, some room because again, you, um, your prints may be different. So I'm going to take mine off. I can see that I can take off a little bit of this. Oh, there goes my fat head. Okay, so now Perfect. Okay, so the the easiest thing to do to finish this is simply glue all of these together, and that's what we're going to do now. And it's simply glue it here in the hinge area. So I flipped them over. I'm going from back to front, and I'm just going to glue them together. Now the thing to remember, or the thing to pay attention to, 
is you want this edge to be aligned. This is not as important, it's going to be covered. So you want this edge aligned. So now we didn't turn over the glue. And again, you want this edge, top and bottom and the fore edge. Remember to align the front edge. It's more important than this back edge. That looks pretty good. Get it all. Some burnishing love. And then we look at this. And it's beautiful. So, we're gonna let that glue dry for a minute. And then we are going to punch some holes. Now you could very simply, the easiest way again to finish this is you just glue this to this. And there you have it, we're done. And your book is done and it's beautiful and lovely. But I would like to be able to put a ribbon to fancy this up a little bit more. So I am going to wait till the glue dries, then use my two little white holes here as my guide and punch through all these layers. And I wanna do that before I glue this on because I want to be able to grommet this piece of paper and if I glue it on, it's too late. So let's pretend the glue is dried enough now. And we're going to the 3 16 hole. I'm going to line it up with my little white dot, which is right there. And I can never see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm just holding it all really tight. Oh, I have this set for something else. So let me set this correctly. Let's see, where where's the hole? Okay, the hole's gonna be about there. So let's see. That looks good. Keep it there. So now I just need to line it up at the hole. No, I moved it back a little bit. I want to move it up just one notch. There we go. I could, probably could have just measured, but that should work. So now I'm over that white hole, the white dot rather. There we go. Now, if you don't have one of these jobbers or something like it, you'll have to do each of them separately, which just is trickier, but is very doable. So now I'm going to this hole, or white dot rather, and I'm lining it up. And I've got my little guide here to keep it sort of straight. And there. Okay. So now I'm taking this off. I'm gonna let this dry further. Gonna... I wonder where that cap went. <laughs> I haven't seen it in like hours. Oh, there it is, okay. So now I need to grommet. And I'm going to pick some pretty colors or some, and these are vintage, so they're a little bit narrower, which I tend to like. But that's not necessary, it could be my could be any number of these. I don't know where my big collection is. I was using it earlier. Oh, here it is. Okay, so what do we have? The red is too red. The yellow is too yellow. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with a cream. I'm going to go with one of these vintage ones go with this brown only because I'm using sepia. There's this beige color here. That wouldn't be terrible. All right, that's an option. Or this cream. I think the cream is going to win. Ah, come here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the cream and just let it be a quiet little thing. Yes, definitely. 
All right, thanks for playing, you guys. Now we come back to here. And I, I know I have it set for the bigger grommet, so I'm fine. And I'm just gonna add one to each. It's harder than it had to be. All right, so they're a little bit bigger also. Let's put this here. And remember that every time you cinch paper, you take up a little of it. So that's what's happened here, just a tiny bit. Now we can, we can glue this on, and I think I will or I might in a second, but I also want to talk about some other ways that you could close this up, and that would be Chicago screws. So I just want to pop on and um, discuss the possibility of this as a fastener for this binding. Um, they're Chicago screws, and they look like this. Um, I have them in a couple of different sizes and colors. This is kind of a rose gold, and it is simply a a fastener that has a screw that's hidden when you use it. Let me put that one back. So this one I've already put on. So the screw is in here and you do see it on the back, but um, on the front, you simply have to stick it through the hole. And you can see this one is just about perfectly sized for this project. Oops. It's the smallest of, my, of the three sizes I have. And then you just screw it. And of course, I don't have a screwdriver here to tighten it completely because that would be um, planning ahead. But you see there, the binding that works beautifully covers up the hole and keeps everything together. So if you use this as your binding for this project and didn't glue the flaps here together, you would be always able to just take it apart, change photos, change pages, add pages, um, and it's very flexible that way. So now I'm going to show how I will do this with grommets and ribbon. So what we're going to do though is whether or not we glue this is irrelevant, we're going to add a piece of ribbon. And right now I think I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to make it pretty like that. So let me see what kind of ribbon I have. All right, so I poked around and I found this cream seam binding. It's lacy and cute, that would look lovely. So I'm going to, like I said, for now I'm not going to um, glue that down. I may change my mind later. But for now, I'm looking for my pokey pin. I'm going to poke Poke this lace through all the layers. Come on. You can do it. Come on. I'm going to need tweezers. I've done this three times and none of it took this long. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to come back through here. We'll start by sticking it through this hole. It shouldn't be very difficult. And then through this hole. Yeah, I know I could have taped this. That would have made it easier. I didn't think it was gonna give me any trouble. There we go. And then lastly through here. Come on. You can do it. I don't know who I'm talking to, <laughs> the lace or me. Come on, it's, it's out. There we go. Okay, so now it's pretty back there, pretty here. And I'm just gonna cut some of it off. And you get to watch me tie a bow which could take forever. So yeah, I probably will glue that down in the end. But for now, we're not, because it's possible I'm going to add another page to this. I 
Oh, look at that. That's very sweet. So I showed Jack, my husband, my uh, other, my version, the uh, pansy version of this. <laughs> First thing he said, I said, that's prettier than what you mostly do. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. There we go. So let's just trim this this way. That looks fine. We're going to move it up to there. And there we have it. A little cute little album. So yeah, I'm looking at this now. I'll probably glue this edge and just leave the other edge free. And now we can see we have our index, our pictures, and a place for journaling. More journaling. Beautiful. There you have it. A cute little album that you can make and give or put into your own journal. And it comes in a couple of different um, styles. Like I said, there's this one. And this one comes with a non-photo version. And then there's the pansy version. And I have a couple of others in the works that I think um, I'll also be doing kits for. And you'll have to look for them um, on my Etsy shop. So thank you, and I'm sorry I'm a little bit low low energy today. I'm, I have not been feeling good, but I wanted to get this up and done, and I'm really happy with it, and I think it's charming and easy. And if I made it look difficult, send me hate mail because it's not difficult. It's one of the easiest things to do. Oh, look, a little tin type. Um, anyway, thank you all. Enjoy. Go create. Be awesome.